for centuries, the English foxhound has been bred to hunt the English red fox. Now, in the 21st century, they have a new quarry to pursue, the African poacher. Every day, rhinos are killed for their horns in the Kruger National Park. The rangers need to be creative to stay one step ahead. The foxhounds are part of this new dog unit at the Southern African Wildlife College, which sits within the park. The college has been training field guides, professional hunters and rangers since 1996. We're here thanks to Aimpoint and its president, Lennart Ljungfeldt. No one wants to be chased by dogs. That's for sure. Aimpoint has been supporting the college for years. This is not about something which is a quick fix. This is something that we have to think through and we have to realize that it takes effort from one generation to the other generation to make it possible for other people in 50 or 100 years to be standing here and have the view that we have this evening. One of the college's most famous lecturers is Dr Kevin Robertson, author of the best-selling The Perfect Shot, about shot placement for African game. We will hear more about the work being done here in our new show, Field Sports Africa. But first, Dr Robertson is going to explain how this multi-breed task force is going to track down and tackle the poachers. It's an absolutely new initiative. It was started by Richard Sari, the, the, the section ranger here. This is Holly's initiative, so the dogs are very much in the training process and they have to be taught how to track humans. Initially, I suppose, in their genes of these dogs to track foxes or the, the blue ticks come from, uh, from the States, so that could be hunting cougars or bears or whatever they use them for in the States. So now it's a different ball game, so they need to be trained to, to track humans. Basically, there are four breeds. We have a blue ticks, Foxhounds, we have German short head pointers, Melanoirs to put a bit of aggression into the pack, and then we have two uh, beagles as well. And beagles are just detection dogs. Just like you'd have a dog that would be at the airport sniffing for explosives or, or something illegal. You put a banana crate on top of the quad bike on the front, and the dogs just sit in the banana crate. Their job is just to pick up the, the scent of someone having breached the fence during the, the night. If you find tracks and the tracks are fresh enough, they call in the hounds, it's a three, three dog team of hounds that get released onto the tracks. But these dogs can run at 30, 40 kilometers an hour. So the only way you can follow the dogs is to follow them with a the helicopter. As the dogs are getting close, uh, then they try and catch up to the poachers, then the Melanoise will get released uh, with the intention of making the poachers think twice about coming here a second time. <laughs> Poachers all are armed, they all carry a large caliber weapon, some of the poachers also carry assault rifles. Once, you, once they get close to the poachers, you want to actually protect the dogs, because these dogs are quite easy that they could get stabbed, or get hit with an axe, or even get shot. So that's what the Melanoise are for. The Melanoise will then be to basically physically wrestle the poacher to the ground, and then the field rangers will hopefully then come in and physically arrest them. In the food store, brands have donated food for these incredible canines. This too is a learning process. So we use Akana, Hills, and we also have a thing called Montegro. So we have three different types of feed are being, being used to see how the dogs perform on the, on the different types of nutrition. So we use all these opportunities to find out what's best for the dogs, because at the end of the day we want the best nutrition for our dogs to catch those poachers as effectively and as quickly as possible. Over the years, selective breeding has given each of these dog breeds special attributes. In the next few weeks, they'll be showing just how effective they can be in the war against poaching. The situation at the moment, we're losing a rhino or two, maybe sometimes three rhino every day, and that situation is definitely not sustainable. For more about the Southern African Wildlife College and ways in which you can support it, please go to wildlifecollege.org.za. And for more information about Aimpoint, go to aimpoint.com.